<clears throat> wow, it's good to be with you again, folks. I'm Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. We are going to be in the book of Titus. It has 46 of the most action-packed verses of any book in the Bible. Uh, I have sat and studied for uh, today uh, at least 40 minutes in the uh, beginning of Titus. Uh, just uh, what was about, what Titus is about, and how it came about, and how what it was, and, and how it was put together. And then, after reading those 46 verses, we have uh, the ABCs of um, chapter 1, and the ABCs of chapter 2, and the ABCs of chapter 3. And so... Uh, there is a, the little book of Titus, these 46 verses would take a good week of sitting down with your notepad and a book and writing all the things that you've learned from these 46 verses. Chapter 1 is the introduction. Paul, a servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of of the truth, which is after godliness. Wow. This is what Paul uh, strived for with all of his uh, young parishioners that he had brought to the faith. He strived for godliness to be in them and in their churches in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Wow. But hath in due time manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Savior. He had won Titus to the Lord. And, and I just read the whole excerpt of when he did and where it was and all that. For this cause left I there in Crete, that thou should set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. And if any be a, bl a blameless and the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the sword of God, steward of God. Not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, not a striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful words as he has been taught, that he may be able with sound doctrine both to exalt and to convince the gangsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy Lucas' sake. One of them, even the uh, prophet of their own, said, The Corinthians are always liars, evil beasts, slow belly. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they uh, may be sound in the faith not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that uh, turn from the truth unto the pure. All things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. They profess that they know a God, but in works they deny him. Uh, being abominable and an abom and disobedient and under every good work reprobate. Chapter 2. But speak thou 
the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, uh, that they be in behavior which becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, uh, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Wow, I had that woman for 57 years. I had that woman. Cancer took her away a couple of years ago. And young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uh, uncorruptibleness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that, uh, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to place them uh, well in all things, not answering again, not uh, pouring out, showing all good filthy, all good fidelity, excuse me, that they may adorn in the doctrine of God our Savior and our Lord. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Praise the Lord. Amen. And hallelujah for that. That the grace of God reached down and got me an old alcoholic, an old cusser, old thief, old liar, cheat, and, and picked me up one morning at 2 o'clock in the morning, November 5th, 1972, and said, your number's up. And I said, God forgive me, I'm a sinner. Threw that alcohol bottle down, that cussing and swearing and all the other things that went with it. And God delivered me, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow! Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. This thing speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Chapter 3. Maintain good works. Wow. I put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be uh, n not brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceivers, serving the divers lusts and pleasures, living in the malice and envy, hateful and uh, hating one another. But after that, the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward men appeared. Wow. <laughs> after salvation came all this other good stuff, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope which is in eternal life. This is our faithful saying. And thus things I will that thou affirm continually that they which have believed in God uh, might be careful to maintain good works. Uh, these things uh, are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, admonition reject, uh, knowing that he that is such is uh, subverted and sinneth uh, being condemned of himself. 
when I shall send Artemis unto thee, and Tychicus, Tych excuse me, be di diligent to come unto me, uh, to Nepocles, for I have determined to winter there. Being Zanus, bring, bring Zanus, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting to them. And let our let I was also learn to maintain good works for necessities use that they may be not unprofitable. All that I with me salute thee, greet them, and love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. We have a breakdown in this particular Bible. This is my 72 Bible. And uh, this is the open Bible, expanded edition, King James Version. And uh, I've had it since 72. And I think Brother Ralph Taylor gave it to me. I'm almost 100% positive Brother Ralph Taylor gave me this Bible in uh, 1972 when I got saved and baptized. And a promise of God, often the Christian will doubt his salvation simply because he doesn't feel saved. Not understanding that the basis for salvation is the promise of God and not emotional feelings. In fact, the entire Trinity is involved in this. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I got saved in 72. Brother Ralph was probably one of the poorer preachers out anywhere, but one of the most intelligent, spiritually speaking, sound preachers of the Word of God that ever walked on two feet. And he treated people uh, as spiritual sons. And he gave me this Bible with a commission, and I, I met the commission. I read it all the way through. I marked it all the way through. It's marked from cover to cover, every chapter, every verse in it. I've studied it, and I've, I've used it, and I, I've wore out two or three other Bibles in between this one. And this has been my work Bible to set on my desk and to work through again. And I'm, I'm, I'm going through uh, Timothy and Titus here and Philemon and these little books again and re rehearsing in them. I've been through them. They're marked up. They're all written up. And the promises of the work of the Father of our salvation, he has promised uh, to graciously except in Christ all repenting sinners. How about that? If you are a sinner who has not repented, repent. Say, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. He will. That's exactly how you get saved. And we just read the whole book of Titus in about 11 minutes. That was all three chapters. Now, the promise and the work of the Son, He has promised us eternal life and uh, abundant life a, and a present Christian service here on earth. He is, in fact, right now praying for us and ministering to us as His Father's right hand. Wow! And we can see that if we will go to Hebrews uh, chapter 8. In chapter 9, we will see that he is doing that. The promise and work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is said to indwell the believer. And uh, the union with God himself. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. And a point with God himself. Now turn to page 1252, which is John. 1 John 3, 24. Witness of the Spirit. The Spirit of God has witnessed that we are saved. And the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation. There are three wonderful uh, works performed by the Holy Spirit in preparing unsaved people to become Christians. The work of the Holy Spirit 
is restraining Satan would enjoy nothing more than to destroy the people before they make their decision to accept Christ as Savior. But the Holy Spirit prevents this from occurring. Wow. Isaiah uh, uh, 59 and 19. Let me tell you something. The devil tried to make me self-destruct before God could get me. I tried the fool. I went over Fool's Hill many times in my young life. I never forget the one time that I should have been dead. Uh, I took a uh, 56 uh, Lincoln Continental and put it on the 149 mark and came to a corner that it wouldn't take and hit a cement embutment flipped the car about five times. The, the biggest place they said they could measure on it was 16 inches after it had flipped five times. And I crawled out of that thing. And not only that, my brother-in-law was with me in the back seat and he crawled out of it. And that was God watching over us, two fools. One fool, the driver, which was me. And my brother-in-law was foolish to get in there with me. I was mad and drunk, and I had come home, and my wife didn't like uh, the fact that I was drunk. And I got in that car, and I just floored it, and let her go. And I should have been dead. And that was only one time. And I had other times that uh, were uh, nearly as bad. And yet God wouldn't let me die. He kept me for now so that I could be here today. And the work of the Holy Spirit is con convicting mankind's sin and the righteousness and exposed by the Holy of Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. Felix, a Roman governor, actually trembles under conviction as he hears Paul preach. And the other case involves King Agrippa who responds to a gospel message by saying, Almost, Paul, oh, thou persuadest me. Almost you persuade me to be a Christian. The work of the Holy Spirit and regeneration when a uh, repenting sinner accepts Christ as Savior, he is given a new nature by the Holy Spirit. The second Corinthians 5.17 Jesus carefully explained the ministry of the Holy Spirit to Nicodemus. Page of John 3, 3 through 7. John 3, 3 through 7. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. All right. John chapter 3, 3 through 7. Let's take a look at that real quickly. Here we've got some time. This has been a short book, uh, John 3, 3 through 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, that means truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again? Can he enter again into his mother's womb and be born Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. <coughs> that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it will, and listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it came. And whether it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. <coughs> Being born of the Spirit is something God does. He's the one that brings us in. And He brought me in in 1972. Wow. How, how did God let me live for 20 years? as a hellion, as a rebel. My mother and father were praying for me. 
regular, daily. They were praying for me daily, every day, that God would protect me, keep me alive, and, and save me one day, and put me in the ministry. And He did. And He did. Yes, He did. And, and um, I try my best not to look back at my sinful life. But my sinful life was seriously wicked. Seriously wicked. It was wicked enough that I should have been killed many times in my life. Uh, but God undoubtedly because of my mother and father's prayers intervened and kept me from dying because I tempted uh, the Lord to kill me for sure with my actions and um, I'm kind of like like that motorcycle rider that said he was going to jump over the Grand Canyon which was an impossibility and so, I don't know if he tried it or not, but if he did, he's not, no longer here. And so, uh, I tried to jump over the Grand Canyon too, in the sense of the word, but God kept me from killing myself d doing it. Well, our time, we're going to cut this one off at 21 minutes, and this has been a good little study. I've been very happy with studying it myself. It has blessed my heart and has filled my spirit uh, back up to be able to do another one in, directly. And we'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.